OK, I'm going to start then by defining a random variable x. So I'm going to say let x be the random variable, the volume of the carton in millilitres. Now we know that the volume of the carton okay, follows a normal distribution. So I'll say where x follows a normal distribution. And with any normal distribution, we describe it by two parameters. The first parameter is the mean and the second parameter is the variance. So the first parameter then, the mean, is 120 millilitres. I'll leave the units out. The second parameter is the variance, which is the standard deviation squared. So the standard deviation is 1.8, so I'm going to write that in as 1.8 squared, rather than work it out. OK, next, what I always do is draw a sketch of the distribution that I'm handling. So we have the normal distribution with the random variable x. And along this axis, we have the range of values of the volume. So the central value is a mean of 120 millilitres. So I'll pop that in there. And we're looking for the probability of being more than 118 millilitres. So 118, we'll just say, is somewhere around this area. And it's an observed value. So we use a small letter x for that, and I'm popping in there 118. Now, the probability of being more than 118 is represented by the area to the right of 118. So if I just shade that in, like so, OK, we have that. OK, now to work this out, what I need to do is standardize this distribution. Standardizing then is trying to work out how many standard deviations the 118 is below the 120. And knowing that the standard deviation is 1.8, I can see that if I was to step back just a little more than one standard deviation from 120, it would take me to 118. Well, this distribution below, the standardized normal distribution z, given by z being a normal distribution with a mean of 0 and variance 1, always works out how many standard deviations we are above or below the mean. And in this particular case, what I'm going to do is translate that 118 value down onto this standardized curve. Remember that the mean here is 0, and we're trying to work out this z value here, which I'm going to call z1. And the observed value on the standardized normal uh, curve is always given by z equals the observed value from this distribution minus the mean mu, all over the standard deviation sigma of this distribution. And in this particular case, we're looking for z1. And z1 will equal the observed value up here, which is 118, minus the mean of 120, all divided by the standard deviation, which is 1.8. Now, if you work this out on any calculator, what you find is you get minus 1.1111 and so on. Minus 1.1 recurring. So that means that 118 is effectively 1.11 standard deviations below the mean. So I'm going to find out the probability up here by shading this graph below. Okay. Remember that the probability is equivalent to this area. And so what I need to do is just work this out. So I'm being asked then to work out the probability that the volume of the carton in millilitres, that's given by x, is more than 118 millilitres. And that probability is represented by that area, which in turn is represented by this area. And that is the area to the right of the z1 value. So 
In other words, it's equal to the probability that z is greater than this particular value, minus 1.1111, etc. Standard deviations away from the mean. Now, to work this out, we need to look in cumulative probability distribution tables. And when we look at most tables, they're fairly limited. And here's a typical set of tables. And on this set of tables, we have a diagram showing the standardized normal distribution. And what it does is, given a z value, it just gives us the probability of being less than it. Okay, And uh, we want the probability, unfortunately, of being to the right of it. Well, how do we handle this? Well, what we do is, if I can just sketch this just down here, what we have is our standardized normal distribution, okay, z, okay, central value is zero. We've got a z value of minus 1.11. I'll just write minus 1.1 in there just for the moment. We want that area. The tables will not give us that area directly. What we have to do is consider the symmetry of the graph. So by drawing another bell shape like so, this is the central value of zero. If I reflect this line in this central line here, it will go to the other side and we would have a positive z value of 1.1. And this area here would be exactly the same as this area to the left of 1.1. So in other words, working out the probability that z is greater than minus 1.1 recurring is exactly the same as working out the probability that z is less than 1.1111, etc. Okay? And on the tables, this is generally represented by the function, the phi function, phi of 1.1111, etc. Okay, so all we need to do now is just look in the tables. So go to the tables, look for 1.111. Uh, the closest I can get to it is just a z value down here of 1.11. So if we look at that one, okay, what you'll notice is that I've got phi of 1.11 is 0.8665. That is that probability represented by that area. Okay, so remember that. So we go over here and just write in that phi of 1.11111, etc., is 0 0.8655. And that brings us to the end then of this problem.